Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around one in two women and one in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol, the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion. Whether it's to improve your sleep, I love their sleep gummies, I take them everywhere, your mood or your focus, they even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company, they use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Have you guys heard my news? I have a new sex gig. I'm not a porn star. It's better. I just launched my new premium skincare brand called Emily and Tony. These products are tried and true to help spice up your sex life, which is what I'm all about. I'm talking about massage oil candles that are one part candle, one part body oil, and check out these flavors. They come in delicious scents like creme de vanilla, cocoa, and fougere. And they're hydrating, and they leave your skin feeling super luxurious. We even have a product for the guys called Down Under Comfort that helps keep their balls smelling fresh and clean and dry all day, which is exactly what you want, right? So guys, if you take care of your balls, your partner will take care of you. So help us keep this podcast free. Use code EMILY to get 20% off your first purchase at emilyandtony.com. Trust me, you'll love them, and you're welcome. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. Where you can listen to all of our podcasts, check out our videos, and the first thing that you should do is sign up for our mailing list. Because when you sign up for our mailing list, you you do get a free report. Five biggest mistakes men are making in bed. Five biggest mistakes women are making in bed. But not only that, I will be sending you that free report, but you'll get emails from me, and they're not spam, and they're not annoying, I promise, because you guys know you can trust me. But it's useful information. Maybe it's the podcast you missed. Maybe it's some special discounts and all those toys and products you wanted to buy, or maybe I'll just make you laugh your ass off. Whatever it is, just um, sign up, and I won't bother you too much, and we don't sell our list or anything like that. And also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Sex with Emily. And of course, as always, I love hearing from you. I read every single one of your emails that you send to feedback at sexwithemily.com. 
I know I might sound a little sexier tonight. Um, I actually lost my voice, as you all know. I was at the um, AVN Awards last week, the AVN Festival in Las Vegas. I gave the keynote speech, which I pulled off barely. I was up till 4 a.m. That's just me, last minute person, but it was awesome. Um, eventually, I'm going to post it on my website, which it was a really long video. You're not going to want to sit through an hour, but I'll just pull out the best parts, I promise. And um, it was a crazy show. It was so fun. And my guest here tonight can actually talk more about it because she's been there like several times, I'm sure. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Just, yeah, subscribe to the podcast, check it out, and um, yeah, just email me with all your questions. And my guest tonight is Mia Isabella. Hi. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. You as well. <laughs> I'm so glad this worked out. So, so Mia Isabella, she is actually she's a transsexual porn star known as the cutest little T.S. chick with the biggest candy stick. <laughs> hey, it's on your website. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Is your candy stick really 10 inches? It is. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. We're going to get in that t- into that as well. And you're also exciting that you're, do you live, you live in the area? I live in the hills. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, and you're nominated for a big award. I am. I mean, they're okay. So I've been to three sex conferences as much, which sounds pretty exciting. A lot of people, they think I'm like boning no the whole time. <laughs> it's work. I was at the, the and me show and right. then AVN, which mm-hmm. just, you know, crazy in Las Vegas. And now we've got the X biz and you're tomorrow. nominated for award tomorrow night, yeah. which is exciting for the, what it, it's for the best, best transsexual best. website. Yeah. Okay. So I actually love X biz. It's been so good to me. I've actually won three awards in the past two years consecutively. So oh, it's been, really? yeah, congratulations. Thank what you. were the other awards? I won best performer of the year and then I won best adult novelty line for my toy line with pipe dreams that I have. Oh, launched. great. I love pipe yeah. dream. Yeah. So. got to talk about toys and all that stuff. Yeah. So your website is Mia, M I A dash Isabella dot com and also this is all on sex with emily dot com so um so it says that this is a little about your bio your changes you look like a chameleon from a blonde bob wig to long black hair and a bondage <laughs> outfit you were also the first transsexual to do a voiceover on a video game I am, yeah. Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh my God, do they give you residuals for that? I wish. No, right? I've been talented too. They're like, here's five hundred bucks. So we're gonna make a lot of money off you. It pisses me off. But then, you know what? The opportunity was incredible. Exactly. It was the first of you know of its kind, and it's kind of opening up doors for Absolutely. other girls in my genre to know that they can do more than just porn. So. Exactly. I think that's great. So I have so many questions for you because I think transsexuals. I think it's people are confounded by it. Like they just don't really understand. <laughs> They're like, you know, because because you date men, of course, primarily. Like, and um, so, so you can you just tell me about, about your beginning mm-hmm. and how you first realized that you felt more woman than man and how oh, it all happened. Well, uh, as in the case of most um, transgendered uh, females that I've you know come across, usually we all know very early on around the beginning of childhood development. Mine was when I realized the difference between the social behavior with girls and boys at four years old. The four girls got to wear pretty clothes. And, you know, play with dolls, which is what I wanted to do. And the boys are outside playing in the dirt and getting gross and wearing ugly clothes. And I just didn't want nothing to do with it. Right. And, and how were your parents? How they um, to well, you know, really. Was, like, here's a truck. Well, no, no, no. It was more fear because we were from a very affluential family in the South. And um, they wanted to protect me. And so it was more like they wanted to figure out what was going on and understand it. So, I mean, that made it very lucky for my upbringing because they became very much protective of me. I love that. Because they wanted so to learn. Many stories. They yeah, did. They wanted to learn. So they supported you. So then how was it growing up then before you, so you've had opera, opera, the operation. Um, I have you any, like. Oh, you mean like surgery, plastic surgery, surgery. Plastic yeah. surgeries uh-huh. and stuff like that. But, but um, before that, like growing up, like high school, middle school, like what? I was very androgynous. Um, you know, the people that I grew up with, they obviously knew. Um, but people that weren't from our circle they never knew I was just another girl. I had long, blonde, curly hair, and I was always hanging out with the girls. You know, it was before they all developed. So, you know, we were all um, just girlfriends as far as anybody else con- was concerned. Uh, so they didn't they didn't even know? People that were outside of our circle, no. Okay. I mean, and, and in our circle, you know, again, we come from a very, you know, well-known family. So, I mean, I was very popular. I was a violinist and in gymnastics oh, and wow. swimming and things like that. So, I mean, I had a lot of friends and I had a great upbringing. So okay. I was That's lucky. good. I'm so glad to hear I was that. Lucky, yeah. You just hear like, you <laughs> and my parents are like, really? What are you doing for a living? No, they're fine. They're supportive now. They're like, as long as you're paying your bills, we're okay. But my mom for a long time was like, what's your plan B? You're going to talk about sex for a living? Really? Um, so um, what about your like first sexual experience? What was that like? It was awful. Really? It was okay, awful. tell me. Oh, gosh. Um... I was dating a much older guy, and um, I mean, I had, we had been, you know, communicating and talking, and I was 17, and he was 32, was an at- attorney in Chicago, and um, we had a long, you know, year of dating, and, you know, he went, obviously had to wait until I was adult enough, right? and um, 
I don't know. I just expected more of the romance and, you know, the pleasure and him teaching me in, in a very, you know, sexualized and, you know, selfless right. way. And it was just kind of like he was he had been waiting for so long. It was just all about him. And right. he didn't really take the time to teach me things. And it was just... It, it didn't feel like I thought it was going to feel. Right. It never does. No, it's I know. Right? Kill. I just want to tell people because, you know, I always love line here in the studio after which you were calling. I'm like, it's okay. The first experience. Like, it's, but for you, so, okay, so tell me about your, your so you take hormones. You had I just started hormone therapy therapy. about a year ago. Oh, okay. So yeah. up until this point, you haven't. No, my family, and, and I used to date an attorney, uh, um, endocrinologist and doctor from UCLA. And, you know, there's, they were so underdeveloped the, the technology and the medicine for a lot of hormone therapy. And, you know, he wanted to really know, you know, how good. it worked and what was going on before I started using them. So we found a great endocrinologist oh, here good. in Los Angeles. So I finally trusted someone to start them. Okay, great. So then now, okay, so you still have a penis though. I do. <laughs> yes, that's your big, on your website, 10 yes. inches. We already discussed that, which is friggin' amazing. <laughs> So do you find so so the kind of men that you date? So explain to me about your sexual experiences then. So, but they're straight men. Yes, of course. Okay. So how do you do? Uh, tell me about how they interact with your penis. I have. Um, well, I've been in three relationships. The first I committed, you. like your monogamous. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that was my entire adult life. The first relationship until I was eighteen, and then when I was twenty, I was actually married, uh, and I was with him for about four years, and uh, my ex fiance, I was with him for about three years. So all my adult life, I've been, you know. Mainly with these three gentlemen. Okay. And um, they had never been with a transsexual girl before. They just fell in love with my personality and, and right. me. And do they and know? Do they know right when they meet you, or does it come up later? Well, no, no, no. I mean, they they obviously knew. Like my ex had found out all about my ex husband okay. found out all about my my beginning of my career at that point. Right, because well, you, yeah, you started so, your career pretty. Well, yeah. How old were you? When Nineteen. You I just, 19. I just okay. started. Yeah. So then, how, can you explain it? Can you break it down to people who don't? Because people are. I always get questions. They're like, I don't understand it. <laughs> like, I, you know, like how, how are these men not gay? Like how. How does it work? Okay, like, like well, technically, gay guys really, let's like just break it down. Well, gay guys like masculinity. You right. know, um, they want, um, you know, muscular, hot, hairy, you know, jock type of guy. That's the fantasy. Um, straight men love femininity, curves, you know, breasts, beautiful, you know, ass, and right. you know, soft You're a beautiful skin. Woman. And, thank you. We're gonna. We have a little video on the website. <laughs> you can check this out too. But you know, we trans- transsexual women are generally over sexualized so we appeal to the natural instinct in men right because you're for so sexuality and reading like right. we have you know larger hips and bigger butts and you know bigger breasts and we're overly feminine so they're i mean obviously any straight man is going to be attracted to that right by their visual you know senses exactly and whether they eventually feel comfortable enough to you know delve into that world in the front they generally you know so tell me, but tell, I want to hear about that, yeah. those experience. Like when you say you had sex with them, like how does your penis come into play with their <laughs> penis? With my ex-husband, it took um, quite a while before he, um, you know, decided to, he, he wanted to please me that way. Like he felt like he was being selfish after a long period of time. And I was like, well, I don't need that. You know, right. it's like I, I get pleasure from being this submissive and being. So you, you know, are, you are more submissive. You know, filming, no. I'm filming, I'm actually right. always a dominant aggressor in the, okay. in the sex. But in real life, I'm actually quite submissive. And require a dominant partner, right? But um, but if they're not playing with your penis, then how how do you do orgasms? Of course, you could have a, you know anal orgasms anal, with so the prostate. Mostly th- of course, yeah. so it's mostly like anally. How about yeah. breasts? People have like, oh, of course, I love breast play. I love do you have breast orgasms stuff. though. I, I don't know if I, I want one. breast orgasm, but I want one so bad. I love like the second most common time of orgasm. I'm like really? really like who's having them? I want one. I'm like I think I just need to spend some time like with somebody just like play with my breast for like a month and like let let's get down to it. <laughs> so so usually it's so it's usually anally mm-hmm. about that like. Right, a lot of a lot of women. I enjoy that. I enjoy that actually a lot more um, because I can have multiple orgasms that way versus you know ejaculating through a penis. And once you do that, it's kind of like oh, I'm going to sleep. Exactly (laughs) right. We're so lucky. I mean, so but so okay. So tell me about um how how is your sex different than you think than other women? I mean, obviously you have anal sex Mm -hmm. primarily, but how else would you describe that you think that it's it's different? If I don't know if it really be considered different beyond you know the penis play. I mean, um, I'm every bit of a woman sexually in bed, you know, I'm very into the seduction and, you know, um, I'm, I talk from the bottom as they call it, where even though, you know, he's a man and he's, you know, taking me, I'm the one that's in charge and, you know, handling the situation. And of course I love being ravaged and just right. taken wildly. Don't we all? Right? Why don't they know this? So many men, right? Just grab my hair, choke me, bend me over exactly. and just take it. Like. <laughs> choke me, grab my hair, bend me I mean, we, and I'm not saying this is a green light for everyone, but <laughs> right. typically many women I talk to want that. And I think men, I don't know. I was in San Francisco for I 20 years. I think they're years. afraid. I just moved here. I think they're afraid. 
afraid. Everyone's like, oh, every man in San Francisco checked his balls at the Golden Gate Bridge. Because seriously, <laughs> they're like so passive. A lot of them are just like, I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to be very PC about it. And it's like, no, just pull her hair. It's okay. She can still be a feminist mm-hmm. and you can still yeah. dominate. Not that it's for every woman, but but, but, but many women do. I love it. I know. So right now, are you dating anyone? Are you? I have been dating um, a few different gentlemen recently. Okay. But nothing, you know, committed or serious yet. So. Okay. Taking my time out. I mean, I'm I was, sure you meet so many. I, yeah. I have a great, a beautiful team of men. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's how I like it. Yeah, no I mean, I'm, I'm learning. You know, I've always been in committed relationships, so this is like my first time being completely free and just really getting the chance to know the people much better before right. just jumping that's into. That's exactly. That's a relationship. so smart because you're in your twenties, right? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. And my whole adult, relate my whole adult life, I've been a wife or a fiance. So right. So it's good to do that. I've I never always done tell that people before. that. I'm like, you know, and I do that too. I used to. I was a serial monogamous all through Mm -hmm. my 20s and I kind of regret it because I think first of all no one should get married before they're 30. Mm -hmm. I think that you should take the time figure out who you are what you like we all jump into relationships I think that's that's what we're like told socialized to do but it's a really good time to like I always hear people they're like I'm in love Oh my God, my heart is so broken. How am I ever recover? We've been together three and a half years. I'm 18. I'm like, you're 18. You're I mean, it's still hard though. It is hard. When you and become I, attached. Totally. To someone, you become yeah. attached. A lot of times it's your first love. So I think it's you're dating now and having fun. Yeah. So how did you get into the porn industry? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I was working a corporate job at Verizon Wireless Corporation. Oh, you were? Okay. I was going to nursing school. Um, I mean, I was really going with like a straight edge life plan. And um, I ended up meeting a bunch of transsexual girlfriends for the first time. I had never met any other girls oh, like myself yeah, until sure. I was 18. Okay. And I ended up meeting this group of girls and they were living the, you know, the fun life and they were dating all these boys and they were traveling and, you know, all these things. And they kind of introduced me to it and I'm very research oriented. So I started looking up the market and, you know, where the money comes in to play and what kind of people are involved or interested in girls like me. So I really started doing some research and I ended up putting a profile up on an adult dating site. And I was the most looked at girl out of like 10 around the world. Oh my God. And so I wanted to know. Which website can you say? I'm not going to say. But I don't want to promote them unless they've got it. No, I got it. Totally. I'm so down with that. And um, the number one girl. So I'm like, well, I want to know why you're number one. You know, teach me some stuff. What's up with you? Right. And she was a porn star. And so I ended up messaging her and, you know, asked for some advice and things like that. And she got back to me and gave me her number. And um, I called her, of course, naturally. And she just hung up on me. And so I wrote her an email. I was like, you know what? I'm only 18 years old. At the time, I was only 18. Okay. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you're coming to the end of your life cycle in this industry. Right. So it's okay that you hung up on me because I'm going to be number one. Exactly. And you're not going to exist after a while. Right. So, you know, and then I got a call or email back and it was from her manager, her pimp, her manager right. saying, I'm sorry. You've been talking to me the whole time. She wasn't prepared for your phone call. I'm so sorry. I should have told you. Okay. And they invited me out to Los Angeles and they made a bunch of appointments with different studios for me oh, to meet great. people. And I kind of networked and then... I came back a week later and shot my first films. Wow. And I was okay. 19 at that time. Oh, my God. And how was that for you, the first film? What was it like? What oh was the God. first film? I was so freaked out. I'm sure. I was at this giant mansion in Hollywood. And, um, you know, I go there. There's like a full production team and hair and makeup and, you know, other models there. And I'm just like, what did I get myself into? Because I thought I was just shooting pictorial oh, for, okay. for the Oops, project. they didn't know it was video. <laughs> no, they didn't tell me that I was, they were like, no, you don't have to do video if you don't want to. Which we're going to use you for pictorials and stuff like that and kind of announce that you're up and coming. And they met me in person. They're like, oh, my God, you have to star in this film. We're going to give you X, Y, Z amount of money. We're offering you two scenes. You know, you're going to be the, the star of this film. Okay. And, you know, it was a lot of money. Um, so I took it. And I was like, fine, I'll do it. I'll, and I wasn't prepared to shoot, right. you know, a movie. But I just got ready and I just went out there and there was like the makeup artist and the camera guy and the assistant and um, yeah, like the awesome. model and the production, you know, the people. And I was just like, okay. But as soon as the camera came on and the lights were on, my head just clicked the lights, camera, You're action natural. and became a different character. Like I just went into it and just and did who, it. Who were you having sex with? Explain to me like that first sex scene you did. And oh then. God. Um, well he was, he ended up, you know, he was this beautiful, you know, big, you know, very generously endowed <laughs> um, blonde guy. And then they're like, okay, he's going to be the bottom. And I was like, what? It didn't make sense to me. Right. In my mind, because, you know, in my mind, I'm this little tiny, right. you know, girl. Like, why would I be right. the top? Exactly. <laughs> but then um, I ended up topping him, and, and it wasn't my thing at all. But um, it, it, I ended up getting typecast, of course, in anything you do in entertainment right. as this dominant top because of 
my first but thing being a top. Were your penises in play, or was it all? Yeah, I, I I topped him. You okay, know, right. You know. So you we, okay? You had anal sex with him? Yeah, I mean, I, I was the aggressor right. in but the you situation. Just were not, like, I was like, this is weird because I never, right. I had never done that with a right. guy before. Right, and it was the first time I was on film. Yeah, I had oh never done that with a guy that's before. Crazy, so I'm stressed. I was, just, I was just like, what is going on here? Why am I? You know, right? They just mistaken topping no. him. Like, they right. must, they're, this is weird, but okay, I'll do it. Right, and then you did it, and then you got to get. Then after that, you. It became just a natural thing. Right. Every film I did. Right. So, so all your films, that is what you Most did. Most of them, I was see. always just a top until okay. I was with my ex partner, who's also a porn star. And then I was a bottom for him. <clears throat> okay. Because it was and natural for us. To it. And did you learn to enjoy it? Do you enjoy it or just work? Topping? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there's some kind of enjoyment regardless if it's a physical, physical right, sexual right. act. Right, it's a release, right. Like you'll get some kind of enjoyment from it, but it's not my natural place. Right. In my okay. mind. So in your relationships, so you're like, I've always, always been, the I've always been the bottom of the relationships. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, so what about, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced in being true to yourself and your gender identity? Like just like growing up and in the film industry and everything, like what you do, what are like the biggest challenges you think? Do you think people are like misinformation? Do you get treated differently? I, you know, I have been very lucky. I mean, I'm, I'm very well spoken, I, I think. And um, you are? And you're business woman. Yeah. Thank you. Smart. So hard so, to be both. So, I mean, being able to come Talent into any situation. I mean, I've done, when I did an interview with um, Sway from Sway in the Morning, he just interviewed uh, Barack Obama. And then here I come onto this, you know, the studio. And I made him so nervous. And I got a chance to kind of educate the hip hop community where, you know, they would have normally been like really freaked out by right, it. Right, but what, the funny part was they didn't tell the team that I was a transsexual because they wanted to, them to see how the men would react to me. And they were always all over me. And, right. you know, she's so sexually talking and how beautiful she is and I would do anything for her. And then later on in the show, they told no them way. that I was a TS. And it was a way to show people that like... You can use the idea of stigma just by the idea of it to have, you know, exactly uh, hate for it or whatever. But this group I of love that. this group of like rappers and you know yeah, black like, hey, community hey, hey, guys hey, hey, are just like all about it. And then you know, I got the chance to kind of educate and talk and just you know open up their minds. So I've been really lucky that I get to do so many incredible shows and media that I've been able That's to great. kind of just walk in and kind of throw away some of the. Um, the stigmas are the stigmas, attached. Yeah. So I'm curious. So, so you must get hit on by like men, like wherever you go. Like you probably can't even leave your house. I'm very shy. Right. I'm you're public. shy. But what happens when a guy that you're interested in, like how soon do you bring up the fact that you oh, are Oh, immediately. Because I'm not going to waste my time. So you're like, hey, yeah. like, like in five minutes? You know, or like, what if you're trying? Like, if, if some, I'm usually, never, I usually never give any guy my number. They meet me out in public and try to, you know, ask my number, hit on me. I'm just kind of like, believe me, honey, I'm not your kind of girl. And then there's beautiful girls over there go away. And that usually makes them want me more. Of course. So they end Whenever up following they reject me. a guy, they're like all over They stuff. end up following me all over the place. And I'm just like, oh, you know what? I'm a transsexual girl. So just, we just get on my face, please. And then, and then they're like, well, that's interesting. I never would have thought that. And they want to sit down with me. And then and we end up changing numbers. It. And then they end up, you know, following my personality. And then. So the, then sometimes they do. Then they some, Most of the time. I've never had a guy reach wow, out to me. that's amazing. They come around to it. Of course. But, but when you're getting down then with these guys and they've never, they're straight and they've never like been with, like a lot of guys are freaked out. Like there's always like, this like, one, I was like, I think it was George Carlin. You know, this like the comedian, you know, days like, yeah, like one dick theory. He's like, men don't want another penis in the room. Like even in porn, they don't want. So how do they deal with it? They've never. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, conscious of the idea that I want to really express my femininity more right. when I'm with a guy who's never been with someone like myself. So it's not like I'm, you know, sitting there holding myself in all my glory. Right. You know, I'm very submissive. I probably hide it more than I, you know, I'm not getting pleasure from that. Because I, I right. want to, like, get them comfortable. Exactly. And get them to really just enjoy and me as a woman. Amazing. And as time goes now. on, you know, they usually get very curious and comfortable enough that they feel like, well, you're my woman or you're my girl, so I want to be able to I please you. Right. And, you know, even though I would never do this with anybody else, I'd like to do something to please you. So, I mean, okay. I just kind of let them get used to it at their own pace. Right. You know? I think that's great that you've had. So yeah. it sounds like you've had really positive experiences. <laughs> like yeah. you haven't really had any, like, yeah. horrible, like, that your family supported and all that stuff. Um, and you have a really successful really career. Like you're just, yeah. like, rising. You know, that's great. <laughs> um, so... So, how, what would what would be some advice then? Like sex, so you're you're a porn star. You also have had a lot of sex, you've had sexual experiences with men. You're seductress. Like, what would be your like top some of your sex tips for women? I'm always asking like, what is your best like blowjob tips? What's your best whatever? Like, what are the secrets that you've learned that like if you had to pick like your top tips for for pleasing men? Like, what do you think? What can we all learn from you? Oh gosh, um, and we can talk about this. This is, so, this this is, is kind like, of good. Like, it's it might be so know. weird, but like. I don't do I don't I don't deep throat, so I I don't have the talent for it, 
And plus, I mean, I've obviously been deep throated many times. Right. I don't think it feels that great. Oh, interesting. I mean, I'm sure it looks fantastic, but I don't think it's like that pleasurable. So I, I do a thing my girlfriend's called the slip and slide. Oh, <laughs> this is my the technique. Slip and slide. I love so it. So it's like, you know, you're working the head and the shaft as you're, you know, sucking it. So you're giving right. them double sensitivity while you're, you know, playing with it. Cause I, that drives me right because you know right yeah and I watch their toes I watch their feet oh, to see how close they're getting or how much pleasure they're getting from it and if they're getting ready to orgasm by the way they crunch their toes up right. or you know tense their legs up I always watch that right that's a really good tip right. and guys I mean, like you to be I'm just more focused I'm like oh, I have to look at all the things and, and guys really like women to take charge so like if you they want do. something and you want him to do something. Tell him or just exactly. do it. Make Ex- him do it. Exactly. And he'll love it. They love, well, he they lo- love to be it's taken. It's so true that so many men complain that women, like I think one of, one of the biggest complaints I hear from men is that women don't take the initiative enough in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. They're like, I'm always doing it and I get it. They want they want to be dominated. But sometimes can you please just like take the initiative, do something different. Tell me face. what the hell you want. <laughs> just sit out his goddamn just grab face. grab him and sit on his face. Seriously, like what guy is going to kick you off his face? He says he's not the right person for <laughs> Absolutely you. Absolutely not. Right? So, um... What is your um, your favorite sex position then? Oh gosh, huh? I really have a thing for like um, being dominated to the point of rape. Like I have a thing for that. Okay, I like. So do you play like role playing? I just... I just like them to just be selfish and just take it. So usually I think that kind of ends with me with my face down, ass up in the air. I like it. <laughs> so how do you explain? It's like the rape fantasy is like the number one top fantasy okay. for women. And I think that men are really like sort of con- confused by it because they're like, well, I don't want to treat them in this way. So like I want to always like oh, look I into that, like what it is about. I know, right? Just being like <laughs> dominated and taken and, and just being It's seduced. so primal. It, that's the thing. It is the most primal thing. It's not like they call it rape, which I hate. But right. It's more like just being super dominated right. and just like doing, you know, what, what <laughs> you know, what, what feels good and communicating. Like I think, especially in your thing, I always say communication is a lubrication. And so I yes, feel definitely. like, right. You got to like, you have you to talk really, about what you want and what they want so that you please each other. Exactly. And like anyone in a relationship right now, and this happens all the time. People are like, oh, I've been like, forever. I get emails five, 10, 15 years. We, and I'm like, okay, well, well what is your partner like what's her biggest fantasy or what is but we've never talked about it we just don't that's so issues. weird i know it's to us it's weird but it's like so normal like i think also people are together for a while and they don't even understand how to broach the subject okay. and so i just say it's like better like sooner than later just like oh, yeah. talk about you know what you need and, and i think the sexuality is, the, is probably the best part of being in a, a committed relationship because you get to explore you know your fantasies with trust exactly you know that's the biggest thing and if you're not having good sex and like what's, what's the, the point? point in life i know i just spoke on a panel expos <laughs> yesterday and i was just like hello we're all like it was a sex education panel it was about retail stores and how so how they can be better at sex education i was like hello like we're all working in sex but there's people have so many problems with sex like why can't we all you know why can't there be more sex information out there because i don't think that there's a lot of great sex information actually i was going to talk to you about sex toys um I know you have your own sex toy line. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what, I was going to, about your, like, what's your, what's your favorite sex toy? Okay. Besides what you talk, talk about your own line, but then mm-hmm. also what your experience has been with sex toys in the bedroom and what you like. I actually never really used toys. I actually was for, forbidden from using toys on myself um, in my previous relationship. Only as long as I was on camera, like doing like live cam shows and like that. Right. And he was home. Um, I could use them, but when he was never around, I was not allowed to he use. He told toys. you you weren't allowed. Absolutely. And Were you okay with dumb. that? That he was okay. He was very dominant, so I listened. But you to liked daddy. that, okay? Yeah, I did. So, like, okay. But in his way, it was a bit of insecurity because he wanted to know that no one had been in there, like, right. no one had touched his, right. you know, property or his, exactly. his you know, thing. So, what about in, in film <laughs> and stuff? Because do you like anal toys? My favorite thing from my line itself is the lube because, I mean, obviously being in porn, I use tons of different lubes. Um, the thing that they, that's the, actually that's really the only thing I really like out of my whole line. I mean, they have grand, grandiose toys, like really intricate things. Right. My favorite product ended up being the lube. Right. Because water-based lubes usually end up getting sticky. Right. And oil-based lubes, I feel like you kind of lose that grip and that traction when you're having right. sex, if you use an oil-based lube, so you kind of lose the power and you know right. the control with your sexual organ using an oil-based lube. So they made a, a water-based lube or like gel-like product right. that ne- never dried out and got sticky and was an oil-based. So it was incredible wow. for masturbation That's and for amazing. anal sex. I, I was like, it. this is like the best How do thing. people find it? 
Um, just me and Isabel is a big secret collection. Okay, so Pipe dreams. Yeah, okay, you can good. find it on there. Well, what I, we were on the panel yesterday. One of my sponsors is Good Vibes. Everyone hears me talk about sexwithemily.com slash good vibes. Um, if you want to check them out, use coupon code Emily. You get 15% off. Um, but yeah, you make sure you go to sexwithemily.com slash good vibes. They have great selection of toys. They have amazing, you know, everything that I love. Like I've been talking about the Jeju Mimi. They have these cock rings that are <laughs> amazing. The Jeju Mio. I don't know if you know Jeju, the brand. They make really fun toys. Um, um, and it's funny because I've been talking on the show and like their sales have just skyrocketed because I just love for a lot of women who need clitoral stimulation during sex. I love like the Mimi, but then also they have this really cool cock ring that like that vibrates, the Mio, too. That vibrates too. I do like those. I, you do? I think okay. they do feel great. I, I, I got a bunch of them like from Screaming Oh once I did right, a party right, for the right, vice right. president and he used to send me like all, they gave me like a big giant bag of them. So me and my ex used to actually use them. Aren't they great? And it feels great. I know. Like, and people always think that the vibration is only for, for, for women mm-hmm. that men don't, but men, it feels no, it really feels good, good right? Like on your penis, and yeah. your balls, everything. <laughs> so go buy a cock ring today, do whatever, and go right. to, uh, yeah, sexlimit.com slash good vibes. <laughs> Coupon code Emily. Do that now and check out your lube too. <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, so what, what is going on? Like, what's your next, um, like, are you working on a film right now? Um, I actually retired from filming about a year ago. Oh, you did. So now what's it all about? Um, well, actually, no, nobody actually knew that I was retired from filming for other companies for the whole year because I'd done so much media. My publicist always keeps me busy. I was doing, you know, parties it's and amazing hosting award shows and stuff like that. So nobody actually knew that I would stop filming for DVDs. Um, but like probably like a couple of months ago, we did some really a great mini series for my website and it was my hardcore kind of comeback after like a year oh, for wow. my site. So yeah, I keep my site active, but okay. I stopped filming for other companies. Good. Just take all the money yourself. Well, right. Why would I keep making no, right. I mean, so 10 years later, they're still making, they're still making money off DVDs. I did I when know. I was they 18. paid you like five bucks. I was like, I <laughs> it's I like, come on. Right. We had so, a businesswoman too. So, you know, of course, yeah. So. so, um, so can you describe to me one of your best sexual experiences that you've ever had and like, why was it so great? I know that's hard. Um, Maybe. This was, would be, this was the beginning of the relationship with well, one of my previous partners. And uh, we were still learning each other's bodies. And I remember he was just kind of like really – like he would always just be in heat for me. It didn't matter like what was going on. He just wanted to take me wherever it was. Like I would even – sometimes it would be so much sex that I would like run from him and try to like lock my bedroom door. And he'd be sitting there with a the screwdriver laughing. Oh, my God. Taking the thing off the thing just saying, I'm going to get you. Just wait. But you like that. And, That's oh, yeah, play, right? Like, yeah, and he's like, I'm, I'm going to get you. You ran from me. So now it's going to be worse. And I remember he came in the room and he like literally took off the thing off the hinges and he's laughing like, oh, you're dead meat now. And he had like – I was sitting in this chair like, please don't, you know, no. right. and I was sitting in a certain position in a chair like this, and he kind of just hiked me, my leg up and went in and his cock kind of curved up, so it hit the prostate like perfectly, uh. and as he was just taking me wildly, I orgasmed and ejaculated on my own, like not even touching myself, and he was God. just sitting there just so like in awe, like he was so powerful in his mind at that moment that he, right. he made me like come inside and out, and I was just a puddle of just shaking, and I was so shocked, like what just Happens. Oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> because you're talking about the foreplay, the build up, the anticipation, right. which is so, which is what's missing so much, I think, for people's sex lives. Like, especially people in long term relationships, like, okay, we've got five minutes, we got to do it. It's like that's why people aren't having great sex because they're not. And I know it's hard. And I know well, you can tease all kids. day. You can send text I always say messages. foreplay you can all day. Look at each other with little looks. Foreplay so all day. But as you're walking through and exactly any little thing to let the person starts, know you're interested. I always say foreplay starts after your last orgasm. Like mm-hmm. keep it going all the mm-hmm. time. So what are some of your good foreplay tips? I always sex. love to tease. I just love – all throughout the day, it doesn't matter if we're just sitting there having lunch with friends or something like that. I'll be under the table stroking his leg and reaching up towards his thigh or, you know, just kind of taunting throughout the day. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We could be, you know, having – cooking a meal and I'll right. grab his ass as he's doing something and come up and behind him and bite his neck and kiss him. Just right. little things all day long to have them always constantly revved up exactly. for you. Exactly. So when you're ready – They've been ready all day, so they're right. at your command. And, like, you bring them to the brink. Right. And then they're, then they're totally, yeah. totally ready. I, <laughs> I love that. That is a great one. So, um, okay, so what about – we gave some sex tips earlier. Like, we, I asked you what are some sex tips for – I asked for, for women or for men. Like, what would you say are some good things that – what do you think that men don't really know about pleasing women that you think that they should – no. Again, it's just knowing that, as we talked about from, since from the beginning, it's like knowing that women primarily love that dominating. Like even if she's the matriarch and she's the head of the family in right. every other way. Even, right. Even more so. Even more so knowing that. Like 
sometimes you just want to submit completely and just taking control and taking that power, you know, it's thrilling. It's exciting. And men need to know that women need that. Exactly. We need to still feel, it doesn't matter how, if you're an executive of a Fortune 500 company, you need to have that, that sexual submission and feeling like a complete woman. Okay. Have you ever been with a woman? I have. Few, okay. Quite a few times. Yeah. Okay. Some now, films too. So, okay, good. So how, how is that for you? Um, it's just work for me. It just works, I don't so have that. I don't have that natural not. instinct to want to take a woman. You know right. what I mean? I'm not sexually attracted. I love beauty. I right. love femininity. But I don't have that thing so that clicks right. exactly. in your mind that just makes you just want to do it. Right. I got it. So do you have any good oral sex tips though? Because you've had to do it. I'm sure you're really you I've never done oral sex on a woman. Oh, you never did oral sex. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you just like played with women. Because yeah. I was, men are always like hankering for more oral sex. <laughs> like, What's your best oral sex tip? Um, just get in there. <laughs> yeah, what about blowjob tips? Did you t- Again, like, this slip oh, and this slide. Slip I slide. love that. And then what about like balls? Like do you feel like that, that with different, some men love them, some men don't? I, I don't think like sucking them hard is the thing to do. I think it's really sensitive. Like licking them, squeezing slightly, fondling them. I think men love that, especially Actually during blowjobs, you know, right above, like, you know, the, when you grab the cock and right yes. underneath, but behind the balls, you press on that and that kind of like right. stimulates the, too. Like so, the yeah, it's like, right. yeah, the taint or the, yeah. Right. I think like playing and cupping and just kind of fondling, then they love that. But if you found out that, if you found that some men don't want their balls touched, well, if they're afraid you're going to hurt them, yeah. Right. Oh, right. But I feel like some are like, I'm just not into it. I'm always like, well, I think, I, I think it's because I somebody doesn't want to hurt them. I think they have like post traumatic ball uh-huh. disorder like or something. Someone like sucked something them too hard happened. and it hurts them. And um, speaking <laughs> of balls, I actually have another thing to say because yes. I'm wondering to my listeners and to you, how are your ball. Okay, so I have a new product line called Emily and Tony, emilyandtony.com. And I I have to say, I made this, but it's it's called Down Under Comfort. Okay. So I it's 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 for men, but women can also use it too. And I'm wondering like how are your balls feeling right now? Are they super clean and dry? Does your partner complain or is not always willing to go downtown? If so, I've got the product for you. I'm going to give you some. You give it to your partner. I've just launched a product called Down Under Comfort. It's from emilyandtony.com. So basically, like a lot of men use talcum powder because they okay. want to stay fresh and dry, uh-huh. right? But talcum powder is actually carcinogenic. It's messy. It gets all over right. the floor. It's a whole thing. So it's a cream to tapioca powder formula that is designed to keep men fresh and cleaned out under or wherever they need. And a lot of and girls can use it too, like under their breasts or anywhere where you feel sweaty. It smells like amazing. It's like, um, okay. it's like a citrus. It's like, a, you know, men and women can use it. And it's so funny because I gave it to a guy friend who teaches these boot camps in New York, like sweaty boot camps in the summer. <laughs> and I gave him like, a like, sample this. Like, what do you think? And he's like, oh my God. He called me. It's like after day of like 10 hours of teaching. But he's like, <laughs> holy shit. I'm like, oh my God. My balls, they are fresh. Like they still smell fresh. Like I'm not <laughs> sweating. It's like, it's amazing. So it's like a miracle. So there's a lot of a lot of guys are like, oh, I'm fine down there. But really, you'll be more likely, more fine down there, and your partner will be more likely to go down there if you do stay fresh and dry. So use coupon code EMILY. You get 20% off your per- first purchase. And you check, can check it out at emilyandtony.com. And again, even if you think you're always fresh and dry, you're probably not. <laughs> so um, check it out. And I've got, I've also have massage candles in the lines. So I'm going to oh, give nice. you one of those. They're so... Thank you. Um, have you ever used a massage candle? They're like... No, I haven't. Do you like massage? I love massage. Right? Who yeah. doesn't? Mine? I always say like massage is like the gateway to intimacy. Like a lot of couples, again, who aren't really connecting, it's just great to touch your partner. Very true. Take sex off the table and start to massage. And these candles are, um, they're aromatherapy nice. and they're coconut oil and soybean oil and they burn cooler than most candles and they, they it's not waxy and you pour it on your lights warm and it's like this feels so delicious and you can give your partner a massage. Oh, so I have a little, thank you. little treat for you that I'll I'm going to give you. Um, yeah, you got to try I it will. out. Like, it's fun. And it just, I just let it in my house all day. Like I just, I just love it. And then I use it as a moisturizer in the morning like on my body. I so. love coconut oil. Right? You're going to love, love coconut it. oil is like the miracle thing. It's, it's great like for lube. If you don't have any lube exactly. and you get organic coconut oil. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you could use this with lube. You can use it on your face. You can, <laughs> I eat it, put it on my toast skin, in the morning. Put it on your skin. I, know, I love it. It. your skin is so beautiful. Thank like, you. what's your be- What do you do? Um, I just try to eat well, I guess. Yeah, you healthy? You super happy? I, I, I'm not like really crazy, like you know, like a lot of people out here. But right. <laughs> like, I, like, like I just like really good food, you know. So I, maybe that, maybe it has something to do with it. And I like to rest a lot. <laughs> right, you get a lot of sleep, yeah, especially do. before tomorrow night, the expo's wars. I'm going to be on the red carpet, so I'm going to be interviewing you. What are you going to wear? I can't say it. Oh, my I'm God. Gonna surprise something fab. Something yeah, fabulous. I used to be a stylist. I used to own a boutique in Chicago. Oh, you did? So you did? Maybe some you could style stuff. me. I need some help. Oh, for sure. Because I've got all these things coming up. I love I totally it. need help. So what would you say are some challenges in the, going back to the adult industry? And what, like, so you're, so you, you're still in the adult industry because you have your own website. Media-wise, yeah. But what was like your challenges that you faced when you were doing it? When you were doing porn, would you say? Um, I really didn't have any challenges because I always had a separate life outside of it. Like I'd go to L.A. and film once a month and then I just went back home and I was just a normal suburban girl. 
Um, but I ended up having a stalker at one point, and that was extremely frightening to me because this person ended up stalking me for many years to the point where I had to get a restraining order against this person. Oh my God. After they saw you in the movies? Oh, my God. In the film? I ended up being a vice president of an electronics company and sold Always me. Always the vice president. And sold me, uh, right? <laughs> and so sold is the me guys a, you least expect. And he sold like me like stalkers. a bunch of products, um, and he had, you know, put like – bugging stuff in these these things oh my god that's crazy and he ended up going on like all these like escort sites and uh, review sites and anywhere he could discredit me he would say the most you know salacious scandalous things i mean you can look at me and say i'm just a little normal girl right i mean he said some of the most awful things and he tried to really derail my career from the oh beginning just making everybody think that i was just a psychopath and because I, he was obsessed with he you. was obsessed and i wanted nothing to do with him and i ended up having to go to court and sue this oh guy and god. that ended up being like a that's it, was, it was going on for years, and I finally got like an emergency restraining order against this person. It lasted for a few years, and then he started his shit again. Oh my god! Yeah. Can we do something about him? We put him in jail now. Uh, I think it's that jail? time. Like it's to the point Let's now that that. that would be like the next thing that would. I mean, I have like legal documents, and he even went on a blog and said that he was going to write because I'm working on a book soon. Oh, you are. Yeah, what's it about? Well, you'll just have to see. Come on. I'll talk uh, about it. I'll talk about it. I know. With me. Lainey taught me that. <laughs> Lainey, Lainey's amazing. Publicist. But yeah, we're 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 working on finding the best team to put the book out with. But I had tweeted about the fact that I was going to be doing a book, and he went on some blog and said that he was like the expert on me as a ballad. He was going to launch this unofficial uh, autobiography about oh my me. God, so of course, I, like I went on and I posted up the confidentiality agreement and the restraining order and all this stuff, like so people would know enough. Right. Psycho. I'm not taking yeah. it anymore. I mean, people I, know that I'm a victim of something crazy like that. That, that was so the biggest, crazy. Okay. biggest thing. Yeah. That's okay. Well, I'm glad you've had like really positive experience. I have one more question. I, will laugh. <laughs> I have a few more questions, but I yeah. one more thing is like, did you ever consider, because you are so feminine, like getting the surgery, bottom surgery? I would have had it done at 18 before I got into porn, for sure. So you would have. So do you I still- had no desire for it. I had right. no. So that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. So, because it's interesting, because like, so, because you have breasts, but so if you weren't in porn, so now you think it's kind of like how you make your living. It's like- well, but you don't. I, what ended up happening was I became very confident in my sexuality through porn. Um, I was, you know, I was very raised traditionally, so I mean, in my mind, I was meant to be completely woman and you know, be a wife, and that was the gist of it. But being in porn, kind of people so glorified it and right. makes it a big deal about it. Like of course, I made a wonderful living off of being this unique kind of person that I am. Um, but I would have done it at eighteen as soon as I could have. Okay. Um, and now, do you think you would? Oh, definitely. I'll definitely be doing it. You think you'll be doing future. it eventually? For sure. I mean, okay. Yeah. It's so, something that I glorify. I mean, the porn world does, and it's a big deal for other people. But right. in my everyday it. life, it's yeah. not like I'm, you know, looking at myself like, oh, God, this is so great. <laughs> right. Exactly. So you something I don't utilize not, in my, right. in my so life. So it's a unique, like, you have your own, your, yeah. your own thing. That's your thing. I got it. So you would just. Definitely. Got it. I got it. Okay. Um, and so, okay, so I've got some emails from listeners I have to answer every show. I'm thinking you can help me with some sex advice here. Okay. So, dear Emily, there's a girl I've liked for a while. We dated for a little bit, never had sex. And then she tells me, I feel we've been moving too fast and we should just be friends for now. Okay. That's fine with me. So, we go out to dinner the next week, go back to her place. One thing leads to another and we're about to have sex. When I said no, she got mad at me. Was I wrong for turning her down even though she's the one who wants to take things slower? Thanks, Albert. I think she was just trying to make him chase it. Yeah. And then once you saw that he was willing to come after and make the chase, then she was ready to say it because she probably had a bad experience where she felt like she trusted somebody and then she just gave herself. And then after it was kind of like, eh. So she probably wanted him to chase it. And once she saw that he could, yeah. that he would she chase just it. shut him down. So and then games. she was going to give it to him. And then she was pissed like, wow, okay. So you just, right. it backfired on her. Right, exactly. So exactly. So I think just men are like so confused by women. Like <laughs> what the hell does this mean? Yes. Like she wanted it, she wanted it, and then she didn't want it. So I don't think, Albert, that you were wrong for turning her down. I mean, that's how you felt in the moment. You did the right thing. Maybe she'll come back. Yeah, you're being respectful. And if you weren't ready for it, nobody should ever have sex if you're not ready to have sex. I mean, there were times where I've been with someone and I thought, yeah, I'm totally into this person. And, then and right at the last minute, I'm like, oh, Oh, I'm actually not. I'm totally turned off. Like, you know what happens sometimes? You're into yeah. someone and then you're like, this happened to me recently. Well, okay, I can't me say too. recently. i got to change the time. It was a while ago. <laughs> I was dating someone and then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I'm not into it all. Oh, like, it shut down. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't know what happened. And yeah. it's like, we all have the right to say no. Like, no does not mean yes. Whatever. Yeah. And, you know, so, okay. So, Emily, 
Dear Emily, I downloaded your Kaggle Camp app after listening to your podcast. I can't praise it enough. Long story short, I'll tell you about my app. <laughs> after separation and divorce, it had been a while since I had sex. I'm in a new relationship now, and I feel like my performance and endurance are much better. I give all the credit to your Kaggle Camp. Thanks, Tim. So I have an iPhone app called Kaggle Camp. And you know Kegel exercises, right. men and women. A lot of people think it was for women. But I kind of do it anally too. I always like sit and I just so myself. Smart. Right. Yeah. People do it. They're like, oh, you can do it at a traffic light, but no one remembers. <laughs> so it's actually an app. It pops up on your iPhone, uh, your phone every day and it'll say like, time for Kegel camp. And then it's five minutes a day as my voice walks you through it. And people like email me, actually more men than women. And they're like, I can stay harder longer. They're like, they're like, when I, when I ejaculate, like it shoots across the room, like mm-hmm. I was 20 again. And yeah. like women are having stronger orgasms. So I love it because I just made the app and I'm like, I'll see what happens, <laughs> you know, but, but people really like it. So, nice. okay. So hello, Emily, I have a question for you. I'm not one to brag, but I do have an amazing partner when it comes to sex, but I do have one problem. When he is giving me oral, he hits my clitoris with his tongue. That makes me crazy. But for some reason I don't always come. And then he tells me just to just do it. This has happened on other occasions, and I was warning if it's possible to think about it too much that I don't come. Knowing that I haven't before, and in my brain, I concentrate too much on that that it doesn't happen. It's not a problem of not feeling amazing, but I can't quite figure out the problem. I have no problem having multiple orgasms when having sex, and I do masturbate, and I can, can and, and I find I can I can't always make myself come either. But I don't have a problem with vibrators just touching myself. Any advice or tips would be appreciated. Thank you. So she feels uncomfortable with her clitoris, but she can have orgasms other ways. Um, I do think your brain is a larger sex organ, and a lot of times women have a hard time having orgasms. So we get into our mind, like, is it going to happen? I hope it happens. This is going to happen this time. And then we stop ourselves. Well, it sounds like he's pressuring her because he wants to feel like he's succeeding in pleasuring her. So he's like, just show me that I'm doing it. Exactly. And the pressure of him wanting to see the result of his work is probably making her turning her off he's pushing her and yeah. guys are were like just do it I hate that one like, come on baby come on baby I'm like you have no idea where I'm at right now like really like right, it's time for you to leave or give me a glass of water because we're starting over where you're leaving my house because <laughs> yeah when guys say that you know it's just I think it's confusing um, but she has multiple orgasms Lauren's I think you're totally fine and, and, and maybe just oral sex is, is not the way that you're going to orgasm and I do think again for sex one of the biggest tips I give people is just like you have to take your mind out of it. I mean, you have to get into your body. Yeah, just get like, do you ever find sometimes that you are in your mind? Like, I'm thinking about my to-do list, the phone's ringing, whatever, and that you have to just, it's almost like meditation, like whatever you kind of just start, like, focus, well, honey, what's if, your, to, to if, focus on your body? If what the person you you're in with life? can't take your mind off of everything else, then he's doing something wrong. Exactly. But some people like me, even I've been with good people and I'm still in my mind. So yeah. I have to work at it. You're lucky. See, I'm, I mean, you just go once, there. Once he's grabbing me and I know that we're into it and we're, we're doing it, it's all about that moment like I'm not thinking about anything else until See, probably really after lucky. right so that's good because mm-hmm. a lot of people do have like all this brain stuff and their minds and I do that too <laughs> but I've had to learn and I wasn't always easily orgasmic but I found like when that happens like you just have to like get back into your body and all that right. stuff um, okay so Mia Isabella you're amazing thank, thank you so you. much for being on the show is there anything else that we need to know about you or that's coming up that people can check out your site or like fun things that you won't that I know you won't talk about your book and stuff like that <laughs> which is fine but you will come back on the show and I talk will. about we're it we're going to be doing a book um, I signed a television um, show deal about a year ago so hopefully we'll start shooting that soon um, a television like a mainstream a reality a reality TV about show. your life yeah well, oh. but it's about a few different things so it's gonna be exciting okay um, I know it's I guess, hard to talk about it I know and my team was just talking to me the other night about uh, really getting me involved overseas with you know selling products ad campaigns being a spokesmodel for other you know mainstream commercialized things so hopefully we'll get that's to work great. with some I mean, really great you, th- products don't you stuff. think that this is what we talked about yesterday that the sex industry is changing that there are more mainstream yeah. people who are interested thank god like like I was talking actually in my keynote I was like I only will work with products that I believe in like I was having such a hard time my keynote AVN I was like how do you make money in this industry I'm not a porn star like it's funny because people come out to me they're like are you nominated for something you know I should have been a porn star <laughs> but but no but I, I think that, that it is changing and that, that people are looking like to advertise and to have people like oh, especially overseas and, and I think especially overseas and I think with the huge fan base that I have overseas and them not being a serviced market I think my publicist and the you know people that we're going to work with is, they're absolutely right like there's so many different kinds of products and different things that I can be involved with over absolutely. different countries I think that'd be a wonderful way to kind of broaden my career and 
you know, the book and the TV show. And Everything. You've got so much going on. Congratulations and, and some love. So, but you're having so, but you, you're, so you're ready to get back into the relationship. I mean, I'm just a, I'm a kind of committed kind of girl. I you think are. the best of my sexuality comes out when I have ultimate trust with someone. Exactly. So that's kind of where. It is hard to kind of have the fun. Yeah. I don't, sex. I don't give it myself completely unless I'm really, you know, right, knowing in love that I'm and committed. committed. So person. you're kind of going in that direction yeah. now. Okay, yeah, but I, I think, like I said, everyone have fun for a while and then see when you're yeah, yeah. meant to commit. Life is... I learned that I wasn't. <laughs> um, and then, how about your social? So you're, you're Mia Dash Isabella dot com. Once you get on the website, yes. what about Twitter? Facebook? Twitter is the Mia Isabella M I A Isabella the Mia Isabella because there's no other right. <laughs> Facebook the same the Mia Isabella, um, and you know, go to the website, check out my tweets, and you know, you okay. get to know me a little bit. Good. Great. Well, it's been, thank you so much for thank sharing this. Thank you. People I'm are so just glad. like been very confused about things, and I just think you have cleared it all up. Thank you. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening to Sex with Emily. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Sex with Emily. And um, was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. <laughs> Do you want to last longer in bed? Promescent is the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. One in three men suffer from premature ejaculation, but they don't have to. Go to promescent.com to get the desensitizing spray that will allow you to have the sex you deserve. 